Hey everybody and welcome back to another Blender tutorial where today we are going to be making boxes and by making I mainly mean texturing um, any box in the world that you want. Personally, I'm in love with Bunch of Crunch. I eat it, I mean, I was about to say I eat it every day, but that's not even true. I eat it a lot. Um, it's the box we're going to be making, uh, although the technique I'm going to show you works for any box with six sides or whatever. So, uh, only prerequisite for this tutorial, maybe watch the previous one where we talked about Texture Ripper, how to like rip textures out of images because we're going to be using that method. Uh, but even if you haven't seen that, I'm going to cover it here. So I have my second vaccine. This arm's about to go numb. Let's get it done and uh, and hopefully, you know, do the thing. So either way, uh, we're going to be doing this in Blender. But before we get to Blender, uh, we first of all need the textures uh, of which we are going to apply to our distorted cube, whatever aspect ratio it is volumetrically. So uh, before we get to Blender, I took uh, two images of my reference object, in this case, Bunch of Crunch. I made sure that one image has three sides of the object. So one, two, three, this is the underside. And the other side has uh, these three sides of the thing, okay? Uh, you could do this in six images. I just prefer to do it in two. Just cover all six. Um, and the first thing we need to do is take all these images and combine them into one. So then we get to rip textures off of a single image. So uh, to do that, I'm going to use GIMP. You can use Photoshop. Uh, you could use whatever image editor you have on your hard drive. I'm not going to judge. So I'm just going to import in the first one. I'm then going to import in the second one. And all I need to do is like crop and position these so that they are not overlapping. So I'm going to put the first one up here. Uh, the second one, I'm going to drag a bit below. Uh, you can see that this first image has a bit of, and again, all this stuff applies to any image editor. I'm just making masks, deleting all this. I'm going to be getting rid of some of this area that doesn't matter too much here. Although this layer doesn't have any transparency. Add an alpha channel. Boop. Um, and you can see that almost works, except we do need a bit of more texture room. I wouldn't recommend scaling the images or anything because you want as much of the original resolution as, as a possible. You don't want to lose any of it, retain it all. Uh, so I'm just going to go to image canvas size and make my canvas a bit bigger. So I'm just going to make it 500 pixels taller, let's say. And hopefully that should be enough. So I'm going to take my bottom image and drag it down. And there you go. Now you can see we've uh, fitted both textures onto a single image. Don't worry if some of this is blank. That's not really uh, relevant. So uh, step one is complete. We've put all our stuff onto a single image. I'm just going to call it combined. I have a Patreon because I do uh, this uh, blend and whatever that we're going to end up making is going to end up being on Patreon. Just so you know, link in the description. Just save this as a JPEG, PNG, whatever. And there we go. That's step one. So now we have a combined image, uh, which takes a second to load. The next thing we need to do is uh, extract the textures out of here, the top, the bottom, the left, right, the right, whatever. And uh, again, we're going to be using Texture Ripper for this. Previous tutorial talks about installation and all this if you uh, care. So Shoebox, open it up using the deprecated Adobe Air, which Harmon picked up. I don't know why. I'm, I'm glad they picked it up and it's not suffering the same... Uh, Fate is Flash, which is kind of unfortunate. All those Flash games are becoming unplayable very soon. Or I think it's already happened by 2020. No, no, it's happened. Either way, open up Shoebox. You see we have Texture Ripper. Um, and what we can do is we can use this image because this is the one we want to rip from. Take the image, drag it on top, and it will load Texture Ripper. Again, the way this works is the right side is going to have our image preview. You just zoom in and out. You, you pan with the middle mouse wheel and all this. Um, and the left side is going to show our texture. So let's do this one by one super slowly. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to extract this kind of front side of the box. So I'm just going to click. Again, we're kind of doing a inverse corner pin transformation here. Uh, but all you really need to know is we're clicking in the four corners. And then it's just going to do a uh, corner pin transformation to write it into a texture. Again, uh, one of the cool things about this is it's way faster than doing this with projection painting, which it is possible. Uh, but also it's going to give us a image that we can uh, download that is already the correct resolution and we don't have to worry about it. Uh, so you can see we have one side. How do we do the next one? Well, you already know. You just add in uh, another box and it's going to actually um, add it into our tile set. And we're just going to keep repeating this process. By the way, uh, you might be tempted to move on to the third side while this is already processing. Don't do this. Texture Ripper is an old program. It's no longer being updated. And one of the bugs that is being carried through uh, forever, because it's not going to be updated, is if you add in a new one while one's processing, um, it just halts the previous uh, 
transfer or the previous write cycle. Uh, so you're going to have a half written texture is what I'm trying to say. Um, so I'm just going to keep doing all six sides. You can see they're going to be written to the left. And while I do that, instead of fast forwarding, let me tell you a quick story because I know this isn't too interesting. So uh, apparently I have some allergies. <laughs> it shows up every uh, season. So I don't know every uh, spring. So I don't know if it's like grass. I don't know if it's pollen. I haven't been to an allergist or whatever they call themselves. So I'm just kind of like shooting in the dark here. But it does happen every year on spring, so I'm confident that it's some kind of organic type matter that uh, starts budding. That's the issue. Uh, but either way, I get super sniffly and sneezy, and it feels like the back of my throat's always ticklish and stuff like this. Um, and up until this point, I've been using antihistamines, you know, what the pharmaceutical companies would have you, uh, you know, that's what they'd want you to use because you pay for it. But it turns out that there's this Eastern medicine uh, that basically boils down to putting water on one end of your nose and it shoots out the other and it feels like you're drowning. It's painful. It's called neti potting. Um, here's an image of a pot if I remember to edit that in. Um, shit's painful. <laughs> I mean, once you get used to it, it isn't too bad. Whoa, I have zoomed too far out. Uh, but it, it seems like I have to do this uh, once or twice a day and it's always... Uh, I mean, I've actually come to enjoy it a bit more. But what I'm thinking is at some point I'm going to make a little video of me neti potting myself uh, just because it's kind of gross. I'll probably end up doing it on the road pretty soon once I'm doing the uh, mass walk, but uh, hopefully the allergies go away soon. Have I done all six sides? I guess, I mean, I guess so. End of story. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, so we've done all six sides, top three, bottom three. You can see it's made a texture set. Uh, you can do your adjusting here. And remember... Uh, one of the cool things about this program, at any point you could just adjust one of these corners and it will uh, rewrite uh, the relevant texture. Um, so it's rewriting this one, wait for it to be done. In this case, we're good. So uh, once you have your texture set done and you're not doing any more edits or anything like that, uh, just go to save textures and we're gonna save it into combined. I have a patreon.jpg, of course, although that's what we called the previous one. So I'm just gonna call this, instead of combined, we call it tiled. Um, and now we have the texture set and it's, you know, the, the correct resolution and all this. So we don't need shoebox anymore. Um, long story short, we've actually already done all the hard work. Now we just need to apply this uh, to a box. <laughs> and uh, the box you have is kind of dependent on the object you're making. In our case, it's going to be kind of like a flat rectangular prism. So uh, now we can open Blender and let's get busy. Take your box, rescale it. So I'm going to do Z axis, X axis. Uh, this is going to be different for different kinds of boxes. Just reshape it until it looks like yours in the shading workspace. We're then going to apply this. You could call your material whatever. In this case, it's bunch uh, crunch. Uh, um, and you just load in the uh, image texture that we made. Not either of the two images from before, unless you're doing project from view, uh, but this tiled I have a Patreon thing. Uh, which you can see is applied, but uh, incorrectly. So now uh, the second step of the process, and I know it's laborious. It's a lot of work. Uh, the second part of the process is now fitting uh, the UV map, these six faces, uh, to the, you know, six faces that are here. Um, it doesn't take too much time. Uh, so, for example, uh, you can use this linked button to select a face and know which part of the UV island it is, by the way. Uh, but, for example, uh, we start off with the top face, which is this one. And what we want to do, I'm going to go to face selection so you can see when we move it and it uh, moves the texture. By the way... If you're having this issue where it like stretches the uh, other faces, I think the solution for that is we isolate the selection. Uh, I always forget how to do this. You go to face mode, you select this, you turn this off. There you go. Now you're only moving this. Uh, you just want to rescale it to the thing. By the way, uh, one thing we haven't accounted for is rotation. So you might need to do one of these. In this case, negative 90 degrees. Um, and now we're just fitting it. And you could do this either with the face or just vertex selection. So either... Uh, move them exactly on the X or the Y axis. I'm doing GY in this case. It would be super cool if Texture Ripper had an option to fit to UV map. It does not, and it never will. Uh, but you can see now we've uh, fitted the first side. Let's move on to the second one. So select the face. Uh, now we have this one. Um, it would probably be pretty helpful to have some reference here. Uh, so we have the bunch of crunch. It's facing this way. So it's one of these. <laughs> I mean, I, I could go into the next room and pick up, you know what, I'll be right back. I'm going to go pick up my bunch of crunch. Too lazy to have this. Be right back. 20 seconds, if not less. I'm coming back. Go 
don't know if you can still hear me. I'm doing my best. I mean, it's a cardio microphone, so you'd expect it to not actually pick up the audio. I have reference now, just so we can see. So I'm saying, you know, if we're looking at this face, what would be the next one down? It's helpful to have reference. So the next one down, although it seems like these are copies of each other. Either way, essentially, it's this one. Again, you want to make sure that this is facing the right way. In this case, we got to rotate it by 180 degrees. Ugh. The neti pot is fighting back. And uh, all you need to do is reposition. I mean, what's really fighting back is that a lot of Olive Garden earlier today. They have this, um, I don't know if it's only local. Uh, but they have this deal where uh, you order an entree and then $5, you take uh, whatever entree you want home. So it's kind of like a buy one, get one free almost. Buy one, get one uh, greatly at a greatly reduced price kind of deal. Either way, uh, cheese does not agree with me 100%. So there we go. Uh, now we have two images. Uh, let's do... Uh, okay. At this point, let's, let's uh, fast forward. I'll do the other four and then we'll talk about the next step. So be right back. I'm just doing stuff with the UV space. Here we go. Okay, I think we're close to done. You just gotta make sure, sometimes you gotta invert this, by the way. You can see this is written, I think that's what it looks like on the box. Either way, you wanna make sure some of the details like uh, this pull tab are lining up with the dotted line. But either way, I think we're done. I've done all the UV alignment, and again, looks pretty good. We can make it look better, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, okay, so we've applied the texture to the box, whatever, bo nah, God. Uh, whatever box you have, you'll have it with whatever aspect ratio. By the way, at this point, since this is a UV space dependent, uh, you can now restretch this and, you know, put an actual measurement. So I'm going to be like, yeah, it's roughly this, maybe a bit skinnier. Uh, once you're happy with this, uh, what's the point? How do we make it look better? Well, first thing is, it's probably not a perfectly flat box with perfectly flat corners. I'd recommend selecting all the vertices or all the edges or all the faces. Running a bit of a control B. Uh, this isn't going to give you new texture information or anything but it should help blend stuff just a tiny bit. So this is worth doing. This is just so it doesn't have any rough edges. Um, and now actually the super important part, uh, take this image texture that's been fitted. So again, we've just modified this UV space um, to be, you know, this custom UV space that we made. I uh, don't need these notes. Uh, either way, take this, send it through some kind of BSDF, whether it be principal, diffuse, whatever. Uh, basically what this achieves, if we go to rendered, um, now you can see this is actually dependent on the lighting. And even if, you know, all six sides aren't exactly taken with the same lighting conditions because you extracted them where one's near the ground so it has some bounce lighting that the other doesn't, right? Uh, no matter what inconsistencies you have, this will help normalize those out a bit visually. So now it's kind of dependent on the uh, lighting. Um, another trick, this one doesn't make too much sense for this one, but if you had cardboard, it would make much more sense. Um, you could add in a bit of bump mapping, which is to say we're getting normal information by faking it. Uh, just by using this bump node, you take color, connect it to height. So now we've just converted this into normal information. That isn't accurate at all, but uh, you could connect this here. You can see now that uh, we've done this, it will actually look like there's detail on top of it that the lighting's reacting to. Uh, you just take this and you make it very, very subtle, like 0.1, if not less. Um, and this is also just going to tie it together a bit more, especially um, on these areas of high contrast, like these white seams where like the cardboard's overlaying on top of itself and stuff. Um, this is just a tiny thing you can do. But either way, um, now we have boxes <laughs> and boxes and boxes, and you could uh, do whatever you want with them. Uh, but this is just a general uh, technique for obtaining a box. By the way, we should save this, give it something good. Like I have a Patreon. And there we go, that, that's the essence of the tutorial. And speaking of which, with the I have a Patreon, uh, what is this to the right? Is it a list of times that I could have fast forwarded in this tutorial that I didn't? No, ow. It's a list of uh, 750, 60, if not more, some uh, patrons uh, that are actively supporting the default cube and CG Matter channels, why? Well, maybe they want to, uh, but also why would you want to? That, that's the real question. So listen up, um, if you want to watch tutorials early, early access. This one's uploaded, if not three, maybe four days early because I'm working ahead of schedule um, because of the trip I'm doing next month. If you want to watch tutorials early, um, patrons get access to it in some cases multiple days early, all tutorials I make. 
Um, additionally, you get blend files like this one. So if you wanted a bunch of crunch for some reason, you can have it. Uh, with the textures that we created and all this. Uh, more importantly, you also get exclusive tutorials that you do not get access to on either channel. Those are private only for patrons. They go over longer or more advanced topics usually. I think the next thing I want to do is procedural lightning, math-based lightning uh, for patrons only. Um, what else? Discord access. Every once in a while, I make a Patreon newsletter, stuff like this. So if any of this interests you, there's a link in the description. Um, if it doesn't interest you, you would have clicked off by now. So uh, it's not necessary. You already learned all the information. So hopefully uh, you can take this to the bank. Te Texture Ripper, that program, Shoebox, it's super cool. I mean, this is just one application of it. Another thing I want to talk about is curved textures, since I said that was a thing. But either way, I think that's the essence of it. I'm a bit out of breath because of all this like allergy stuff going on. So I think I'm just going to wrap it up here. Thank you for watching. Go make some boxes. Have a good day. Bye-bye.